Good morning. It was a beautiful night. I didn't sleep much, but I did rest. Um, now, before hitting the trail, I am about to go dig my first ever cat hole. It's the part I've been dreading the most. Wish me luck. Here goes day two. Let's do this thing. I'm trudging. All right, it's this morning's real talk. So, I'm probably only a little over a mile. I had to come up, up, up. And now I'm on a ridge, so I think it's gonna be kind of level for a while, but my pack was weighing on my shoulders. I packed it a little differently. And yes, that's a can of sunscreen pressed against my face. <laughs> I needed it at the last minute and didn't have anything else and didn't want to stop in a store because of social distancing. And so it's not that heavy and it's on my pack until I run out and then I'll toss it and do something else. Um, wearing long sleeves, but I'm wearing a hiking skirt, and so I just need more coverage. Um, and I find spray, like, uber easy to put on. I can't stand putting on lotion. Just a little gummy. So anyway, I just wanted to be real about the breaks that I'm taking. I camped at 7.5, and, and I'm probably at 8.8 .8 when I'm at the gate. Um, and the cold ground. I'm laying on my ground cloth, my ground sheet, and leaning against my pack, and oh my goodness, the cold ground and the breeze and listening to the birds. It's every bit worth the break, so I'm glad I did it. Also, because I'm wearing a skirt and probably have a few pounds to lose, um, I did get chafing yesterday. I um, paused probably midday, realized I was starting to feel some sensitivity on my inner thighs, and so I put some body glide on, so definitely bring that with you if you're thinking of doing this, and when I got to my tent site, I, um, washed, and, and then I put on, um, Penitin cream. I had heard that recommended, and sure enough, by this morning, the, the red shapes were gone, so, put on body glide again this morning before I started and um, I've ordered, I had Jim order some silk boxers for me. Um, one of my hiking friends who ended up camping near me last night um, said that's what she does. She wears a, no that's not true. Somebody else told me that. Duh. Um, another hiking friend, Jonathan Chan, told me to wear the boxers, and so I've ordered some, and I'll get them in an upcoming town um, to keep your legs from rubbing and chafing that way, but hopefully just losing some weight will do the trick. While I'm laying here, I'm having a quick packet of tuna with buffalo sauce. I realized when I got to camp last night for dinner that I've been told, don't eat at camp, especially with smelly stuff like tuna. It would attract animals or rodents, and so I'm having that more for breakfast. I had a little bit of cold soak oatmeal this morning, and now I'm going to have this at my break because it will power me since I didn't have anything but peanuts and M&Ms last night for dinner. So, good break for that too. The time has come 
I'm digging my first cat hole, which means it's time to poop. Wow, hadn't seen one of these in a while. So that's kind of nice. And going downhill, I'm on the other side of that ridge. And there's the trail. Yay. It's pretty out there. I have no sense of geography, so when I see mountains in the distance, I never know are those ones that I'll have to cross or not. So I just enjoy them and I don't have to feel intimidated. So I was told after I saw the rattlesnake yesterday that they detect you by vibration, so it's a good idea to tap the rocks as you go. So trust me, I have been tapping the rocks. I wonder what's around this bend. trail. They say it's a mind game because all there is out here is views and your mind. And your mind is constantly working. It's taking you through every scenario. When you're tired, it's trying to help you quit. When you're sore, it's trying to help you quit. <laughs> it goes through all the excuses that you could give to people to say, wow, this was a nice dream, but silly. How in the world is it doable? So you have to have a strong mind game. You got to get in the game. It hasn't been my, whoo, did you see that bunny rabbit? It hasn't been my strong suit, so I am working on it, I'm trying to build all of that. Muscles and courage. <sighs> I don't need water, and I don't know if that counts as water since it's not on gut hooks, but there's some water. It's before the 11 mile campground. Oh, that's not a rescue. It's not easy out here, that's for sure. My first windmills in the distance. That is so cool. It's a long way away. It's leaving now. The basket's not down anymore. So I don't know if that means they pick somebody up or not. It's Hauser Canyon. Hope everybody's well. Always comforting to see. He is really good at camouflage. He's a fatty. <laughs> Finally caught one on screen. They've been very elusive. Yep, laying down again, but oh my goodness. Birds are chirping, there's a nice breeze. 
I have the umbrella over my knees to block the midday sun. And I'm on soft ground under a manzanita tree. And it's a pretty epic moment. So... I know this might be lame to be breaking, but this is why I'm here. <sighs> I have a quote from somebody that I read all the time, and it just says, show up and hike, be yourself, be happy, and be kind. There's the camp spot that I would have stayed at last night if I had come that far. I'm really happy that I stopped at the one I did because it was absolutely beautiful and a fantastic way to start the PCT. So, I'm carrying on to Hauser Creek. For my wood turning friends, <laughs> there is manzanita everywhere. And it's pretty awesome, but you know, I sure wish I could take some of it home. <laughs> Starting the four mile descent out of that last campsite to Hauser Creek. And it's a biatch of a climb to get out of Hauser Creek, but down here there's water which means I was able to drink most of what I had left to replenish down here. It'll be my first time filtering, which is kind of like my first time pooping outside. <laughs> A little insecure about it. Um, but my first cat hole experience went very well this morning. I dropped it right in the hole and things went well. You're welcome. I tell you all the things. So this is what downhill looks like. And if I flipped the phone around, you would see a smile on my face. Because <laughs> at home, I'm used to going three miles per hour. And out here, it's been closer to one, which is pathetic. Um, but it's just been, well, I say it's been hard ramping up been out here for all of one day <laughs> so but I know that um, Chris who camped near me last night she was out like a shot this morning I got up first and started breaking down camp and I left at 6 45 she was gone before that so um, she wanted to go all the way down to Hauser Creek and make the climb out and get to Marina tonight so if I told you the mileage, it wouldn't seem that daunting, but it's a super steep climb over the miles to get out of the canyon. So I'm probably going to camp out down by the water and just continue to let my body acclimate. Uh, I know that in time I'll get strong and can hike long days so this is day two I have to cut myself some slack I should know the names of some of the landmarks that I see, but I don't. That's a cool one, though. All right, it seems to be tradition to film your way through this gate. been told that it's easy if you lift it. <laughs> they made that sound easier than it was. <laughs> it's 
especially when you're holding the poles in one hand. All right, that landmark, I knew. That is a very light photo. You can't even see those white flowers, can you? But if you look down there, you can. Contrast. Oh, these little flowers are everywhere right now. Very cool. I love flowers. I love flowers that are growing naturally. I don't actually love receiving florist flowers. They seem kind of sad to me. But seeing them outside is the bomb. There's just little splashes of color. They're rebels. Never know what's around the bend. That's pretty awesome. I love it. I do love it. Sometimes it's hard and I think, how in the heck did I think I was going to be able to accomplish this? And then other times, like now, when it's just view and level or downhill, which, gotta admit, helps if you're walking a long way. Um, it's just perfect. It's amazing. I stop often and check out all the views. Wherever you are, stop, pause, take in all the views. They're everywhere. Yes in the desert. Crazy. You're gonna get sick of me saying it, but I wonder what's over that little crest. <laughs> it keeps me entertained out here. Everybody needs a friend. Meanwhile, I have seen no one since Chris bolted out this morning to cover her big miles. She said that she is testing her capabilities. So I admire her. I am jealous that she is physically capable of so much and she was carrying just a ridiculously light pack, I think with food and water. It was around or less than 13 pounds, which is sweet. Um, mine, meanwhile, with everything I've been doing is closer to 40 and at times that is really a biatch. Um, I would send some stuff home if I could but I'm told by experienced hikers don't do that. I, I took a lot of time researching and carving down what I need and I'm not in the colder sections yet, so I'll probably wait um, a few segments and make my decision. Ooh, I hear water ahead. It's not time for the creek yet, but it looks like it's flowing well. Wow. Why is this stream not mentioned on Gut Hook? Very flowing. That right there. Very accessible. I had a bit of signal and was able to zoom with my sister and my daughter. My sister had asked me if I could zoom sometime. That was the coolest. It was sketchy signal and in and out, but it was so awesome. I loved them. It really made my day. <laughs> I needed it. I mean, it's awesome out here, but there's nothing like family. Love you guys. I love every time a butterfly crosses my path. I used to tell my kids butterfly stories when they were growing up. 
Oh, it's impossible to catch on camera. <sighs> so every time I see one, I think a yellow butterfly story in my head. <laughs> this one would be a very cool one. <sighs> I miss my kids. Sometimes the path is overgrown and you just shoulder your way through. I saw somebody's video that has a spot like that that's all briars, like big, long thorns. I do not look forward to that. So it's marked on the map that this spot is a view of trail, <laughs> which I find a little defeating because that is really a long way away. Um, I have no idea when it is. I just know that it wraps up and around. <sighs> Work is cut out for us. Huh. This is interesting. So, looks like there's a dirt road walk. I don't know how far. Hopefully there will be another sign soon. Alright, half a mile later, there's my sign. I was doing my clothes and these straps thing. I use them as an elbow rest. Heck, that's not a turn off. That's just a you're still going the right way sign. <sighs> All right, hopefully soon. Yay. Very cool. Probably telling us that to convince us we need to take the trail and not just walk the dang highway. I am very intimidated about that hike out tomorrow. Oh lord. So, Hauser Creek is a half mile away. And I just came from this little beauty. Super accessible. I have no idea how the access is down the hill. We have to go down and then back up to the east side of the So I'm just going to do my first filtering ever here. Wish me luck. The trail down into Hauser Creek is kind of sketch. So it definitely requires attention and pole placement and caution. I have no idea how people do this fast. Why am I so slow? takes me three times as long as everybody else. My tent site awaits. No way I can climb that hill today. I don't know if I can climb it tomorrow. There's no trail maintenance this year for obvious reasons. And I kind of like that it's overgrown. It feels like a, a badge of honor each time you go through a gauntlet and <laughs> survive without being to high heaven. Glad I have poles. Came down by the water and found a better spot. It's just completely 
covered in trees, which, as you know, is my jam. <sighs> Definitely won't be climbing out to a marina today. I'm just going to lay here for a while and catch my breath, and then I'll pitch my tent. Since I have this campsite with lots of lovely trees and some extra glow wire, I strung up a laundry line. I mean, am I camping for a week or what? So day two was a little bit of a disaster. It was slow, just really slow. I can't go any faster. I just go what I go. And then I pitched my tent and it just, ugh, it's like a gear explosion. And my backpack is crammed with things that I won't even use, like my rain gear and my um, puffy and even my microgrid fleece. I thought I would surely be using it in the cold mornings, but not even a little bit. I mean, I'm laying here in my tent and my bra and underwear because I don't have one single short-sleeved anything. I, I had to cut weight, but I cut the wrong weight. It's just a disaster. It's so freaking hot. But by the time I could send it home, it'll probably be time to use it. Mount Laguna is in a couple of days, and it's a way different elevation. So when I mean, you can't even get rid of stuff, ugh, it's just heavy. So I'm not really sure what I could do differently. I'm sure I'm going even slower because I have a 40 pound pack, but it's very disheartening. And I'm the only one in this big old campground. Um, one guy came through, his trail name is Tequila. Super nice, but he was booking it on up the hill to get a burger. <laughs> like, I couldn't have made it up that hill tonight if you paid me. So, anyway, and there's another helicopter. <laughs> I figured out that it's um, a construction project and they're just delivering materials. crazy that it's only day two and I'm struggling. Uh, where's my husband? 